All right, everybody, welcome back to RVA Sec 2024, RVA Sec 13th in the 13th year. This year, the Marriott Richmond, June 4th to the 5th. Our next guest, Mr. Ross Merritt of BlueBastion.net. Mr. Ross, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, how you doing? Happy to be here. Well, I'm happy you're here, too. I love this title, Whose Lie Is It Anyway? One of my favorite shows, of course, Whose Lie Is It Anyway? Of course. Uh, brilliant, brilliant show. Uh, and your your title of your uh, talk today is Improv Comedy for the Social Engineer. I, I got to say, when I saw this, I said, we're going to have a lot of fun. So one of the things I do in my show is I try to make it fun, right? You know, and I throw out some jokes that don't always work well. One of my famous jokes is, you know, I heard uh, people have accused me of being artificially intelligent. That's not the same thing as AI, is it? It doesn't always catch on. People don't quite get those, that joke sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I find through humor, people learn more, right? And in social engineering, when I was a policeman trying to persuade people to do something, I could be bad cop and they just say, I'm not doing what you tell me, or you could be funny. And if you're funny, people will line up to talk to you and confess and do all kinds of things if you have a good sense of humor. Tell us what your uh, talk is about. Uh, and, and with the social engineering aspect, define that for people that might not know what that is. Certainly. So social engineering is, of course, you know, trying to get people to do what you want, whether that be, you know, give you passwords, let you into a place you're not supposed to be in. And this course is in the scope of cybersecurity. Uh, but really, it's social as in people and engineering, as in making them do what you want. Uh, and the talk, you know, it's uh, it's it's meant to not be funny. It's an absurdist name. Uh, it's very dry and boring. And I'm joking, of course. Uh, <laughs> it's about my experience of 10 years doing improv and stand up comedy. And really, during that time period, learning how to, you know, be comfortable talking to anyone about anything at any time, how to be humble, how to be confident. And really, when I got into cybersecurity, I, I learned that those skills that I always just thought had been my hobby play thing had a role in this industry, and I wanted to kind of share that with people. Well, you know, they absolutely have a role, and here's why. I just did a, a an interview a couple days ago about imposter syndrome. This is a plague of the industry, and the medical industry, by the way, where people feel in this industry that they're not quite good enough. People are going to find out. They can't stop the bad guy. How do I do it? I've never had an actual attack. It's all theory. And you know, this the, the humor aspect of these things and using social engineering really ups your game on these things. you got to kind of be an actor well, with this stuff. And to be honest, it's interesting you brought up imposter syndrome because I was actually thinking that on my way to this interview is using the improv's comedy skills, imposter becomes less of a, a burden to you and more of you are embracing the imposter, which allows you really to get away with a lot of stuff. And the things that I teach about in my class could be used for social engineering, or they could be used for just being a lot more confident in your day-to-day -day life and definitely a lot more confident when having to talk with people, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or in front of an auditorium. Well, it, you know, I, a funny story. I got a 2005 Suburban. I'm restoring it. It's going to be mint condition, so that parts are difficult to find. So I go online the other day to buy a manual. Here's the advertisement. 2005 Suburban manual. Download it. It's for 2000. I write the company back. You know what? You sold me a 2000 Suburban. It's 2005. He writes back. The first tip off was his language. It was too good because customer service people are grouchy and this guy was way too friendly. So I know something was up on that one. And the next thing he does is say, would you tell us your VIN number of your car and your making and model and your location so I can find a manual for you? What do you need my VIN number for? Then I catch him and go back and forth with the guy. And the next thing he says, I have another manual for you. It requires uh, Team Viewer and we'll download it for you. No, pal, you're not getting into my computer with Team Viewer, <laughs> right? But it all looked really good. And so he was trying to social engineer me, right? And it might fall for, a lot of people might fall for it because, you know, when you need that part for your car you're restoring, you're just going to pay what it takes, right? So this is out there. And as a defender, if you could recognize those things in people, where they're trying to pull it on you and go right back at him. I, is this kind of a, a unique talk? I think it is. Uh, I've run into a couple other people that are touching on improv with cybersecurity, but it's, it's not the same kind of avenue I'm taking with it because I'm taking a very, a very big embrace of the improv comedy. Uh, yes. And, and kind of the positive spin of it. 
and how, uh, you know, you catch more flies with honey, as they say. Yep. Uh, I've yet to ended my way into getting passwords from chief legal officers and compliance officers before because I make a game out of it when I'm on the phone. There's no stress. There's no intimidation. I'm just simply playing another improv game, and I'm yes ending my way to the end. Now, now, why is funny you mentioned restoring a video? Yeah, or a car rather. Uh, I actually just purchased a, a 2000 Ford EcoLine uh, law enforcement surveillance van that I'm restoring, and I'm having a really hard time finding some of the parts for it. Well, I'll tell you that whole industry, even on uh, eBay, nothing against eBay, but uh, there are a lot of little fake sales sites for these kind of things I'm finding. And I've almost been caught a couple of times. One actually got me on one part. I, I, I was embarrassed that the guy caught me and he took my money, but that's the way it goes. Uh, so it does happen. Uh, you know, what's interesting to me is that this isn't uh, like Security 101 stuff. It almost should be before we talk about coding and DevSecOps and things like that. Is the industry understanding how important this is? I mean, this is really the core of any good security model, physical or cyber. So for my case, I kind of came into cybersecurity later in life. And, you know, I, I was really from the outside of the industry thought of how technical it was and how far behind the power curve I was. And then um, got on with a great team at Blue Bastion that really encouraged me to give different things a shot. And then I come to find out that it's the soft and social skills that I have that are actually kind of the rarity in the industry. Um, and because it doesn't matter how well programmed something is, how many forms of security you're using, the weakest point in security is a person somewhere. Yep. And so we really need to start working on the skills of communication, both to A, test security, and B, if you have this type of skill where you can talk to anybody, you can really get through to the people that you're trying to train, the people that are our clients that we don't want to see get hacked. So I bring my skills that I've learned through comedy and that I'm hoping to kind of share through these talks to when we do in-person presentations to really get their attention and really get them to understand where they fit into the big picture. So I think some of this, it's not technically public speaking, right? But when you engage somebody online that's trying to pull a fast one on you, social engineering, I think the response from people that aren't used to public speaking is the same response, fear, anxiety, how to respond to this guy, what do I do, I'm lying to him, can I lie? It's, it's psychological. I mean, I think you can teach these skills to most people at some minimum level, and people like yourself or maybe myself because of my police background are good at it because I need to come in and con somebody into not shooting me right away before I get killed, right? I mean, it's that fast kind of reaction for social engineering. Uh, what are you finding your responses are when you discuss this with people? Are they, are they thinking they can't do it? That's not my skill set, or do they think they can learn it? Well, you know, and a lot of where I started developing this before I got into comedy, similar situation. I did twelve years in the Marine Corps, and you had to be very confident. You had to communicate, you know, what you were doing at all times, and finding a more fun way to express that as I got into comedy worked for me. And what I find a lot of people who take this class who are interested in social engineering, uh, you know, they're worried about the lying. They're worried about all the, the negative, yucky feelings you kind of get from it. And I like to turn the scope on that. And again, using kind of positivity and, and playing the game with it. And, you know, whether it's public speaking, speaking 101, uh, chatting on the Internet, it's a level of confidence you get from just experiencing it. And one of the big things is like, okay, but I, I really do want to get into social engineering and I want to be able to fish people and get information over the phone, but how do I practice that? I mean, you can't just start randomly calling up people and lying to them over the phone until you get comfortable <laughs> with it, raises suspicions. Uh, and I find that a lot of the games, not so much that we use in performance in improv comedy, but the games we use to train for improv comedy really are the same skills that get you thinking and listening at the same time really absorbing what's going on around you and adding to it that lets you get to that point where you can do it, having practiced it, and have fun with it so it's not stress. It's just a game. Now, interesting to me, I started uh, teaching myself cybersecurity about 10 years ago. Well, actually 1984 when I got my first computer, frankly. But when I got into the Black Hat stuff 10 years ago, I came across uh, I don't know, some, I don't know, it was a conference I was at. And here's a table 
with a bunch of guys sitting around picking locks. And I go, what are they picking locks for? What 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 does that got to do with cybersecurity? It builds confidence in your ability to crack a code or right. That's it's the same thing, isn't it, Ross? Of what you're trying to do, we, you know, we can't uh, always takes me back. Yeah, well, oh, we can't I'm have sorry. a, a well, well, we can't have a stage uh, at a uh, <laughs> at a uh, conference where uh, people get up on stage and do stand up comedy, not like lock picking. But you know what? Maybe we could kind of in a way to get them out there to be able to speak and understand that kind of stuff it's really interesting so uh we've we've done a earlier version of this class one time at hack redcon down in louisville kentucky big shout out to those guys thanks for having me and i turned it into a workshop where i had four or five groups of people playing these games all at once and next thing you know we had standing room only people wanted to hang around after the class was done and i feel like everybody by the end was participating, laughing, having a good time, had completely forgotten about the nervousness of talking in front of groups. So it's not even something you need a stage to put people on. You can literally play some of these games just with three or four other people while you're in line con at a bigger conference or something. It's it's a blast and it's really something you can do anywhere. Well, I'm fascinated by it. Uh, it's the new Mad Libs. Remember those things back in the day? You fill in the words and you make up goofy sentences. It's not dissimilar. It's about having fun and catching the bad guys. And I think we can all learn from Ross. Mr. Ross Merritt, bluebastion.net. He's given a talk at RVA Sec 2020. What year are we in again? 2024. Oh, my gosh. I'm not even sure which country I'm in. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Uh, June 4th, 5th, make sure you catch him and and register at rvasec.com. Uh, Ross, I won't be able to catch your lecture. Uh, I can't make it in person. I wish I could, but I'm going to talk to Jake and see if I can get a recording of it or something because I'm really fascinated by this stuff. And uh, anytime you want to come on my show, you let me know because we're going to have a lot of fun doing this stuff. I'd love to help promote this idea I would you have. Absolutely. Love to be on your show again at some point, Chuck. And thank you so much for having me today.